as you can see with the FBI indictment, uh, the evidence is now really incontrovertible and available in the public domain. That's National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster, I should remind you, appointed by Donald Trump, reacting to the news that 13 Russians had been indicted for meddling in the 2016 election. Now, here's what his boss, President Trump, tweeted about his National Security Advisor's comments. Quote, General McMaster forgot to say that the results of the 2016 election were not impacted or changed by the Russians and that the only collusions was between Russia and crooked Hillary, the DNC, and the Dems. Well, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein announced the news Friday afternoon. Russians, they're accused of running a social media campaign supporting Trump and criticizing Hillary Clinton all at the behest of the Kremlin. The indictment also claims the Russians organized campaign events supporting the Trump candidacy. Now, President Trump, he portrayed this, I don't know how, but it's a victory of sorts, and he used the opportunity to bash the FBI. Again, here's yet another tweet. Very sad that the FBI missed all of the many signals sent out by the Florida school shooter. This is not acceptable. They're spending too much time trying to prove Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. There's no collusion get back to the basics and make us all proud. That's not the only development in the Russia probe. Former Trump campaign aide Richard Gates reportedly he's going to plead guilty and testify against former campaign manager Paul Manafort. Translation, he's flipped. Plus, Mueller, he is paying special attention to one Jared Kushner. He is reportedly expanding the investigation to include whether Trump's son-in-law's efforts to secure financing for his company from foreign investors during the transition was more than a little shady. Then there is Alex Vanderswan. He used to work in the London office of Skadden Arps. He is now the 19th person that has been charged by Mueller. He is accused of lying when he was questioned about his work in Ukraine with Paul Manafort and Richard Gates, and apparently there's audio tapes that prove that he lied. Now, former federal prosecutor Roland Riopelle, as he often does, joins us to help sort it all out. And Roland, where to begin? But I guess let's start, since we're talking about the Russians with the Russians themselves, talk about the significance of the 13 that were just indicted. Well, this was a very serious blow, uh, Richard, to the Trump uh, PR machine. Remember, uh, Mr. Trump has for a year been beating the drum as hard as he can and saying, you know, Russia's a hoax, Russia's a hoax. Uh, Mr. Mueller's uh, indictment proves it's far from a hoax. In fact, uh, he's indicted 13 Russians for interfering in our election process uh, very significantly. Um, and that is, I think, the primary effect of this indictment. I doubt very much any of these 13 Russians will ever be extradited and will ever face justice here in America, but this takes a lot of wind out of Trump's sails in terms of his PR campaign. And, and Roland, I'm not asking you to put him on the couch here, but can you explain in this backdrop where there's been unanimity in the intelligence agencies, including through appointees of now President Trump, that Russia did it, Russia had bad intent and all the rest. The president has still not condemned Russia and he won't impose those sanctions that there was unanimity nearly on the part of Republicans and Democrats to impose on Russia with all the things that I mentioned leading into our interview. Can you give any rationale why he won't do either of those things? Uh, you know, I can't give one based on what's in the public record, Richard. There's really no excuse for this. The president is uh, sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution, and he's simply not doing that uh, by behaving as he is. Um, we can all speculate on why it is he uh, is uh, controlled, apparently, by Mr. Putin and afraid of Mr. Putin, uh, but we don't know the answer to that yet. My guess is Mr. Mueller will get there eventually if he doesn't have that information in hand already. But that can be the only explanation I can think of. Let's talk about Mr. Gates and uh, him reportedly getting ready to flip on his old friend, Mr. Manafort. Why is that important? Uh, that's important because Mr. Gates, remember, was uh, very close to the Trump campaign. He stayed with the Trump campaign after Mr. Manafort left. Um, I uh, 
am surmising or uh, guessing that Mr. Gates, who was so close to Mr. Manafort for so many years, will be able to give Mr. Mueller a lot of leads about the connections between Mr. Manafort and Russia, about the connections between Mr. Manafort and Russia and the Trump campaign. So he could be a real uh, treasure trove of information. And I suspect that his cooperation with Mueller is part of what uh, led to the uh, charge against Mr. Vandersvern. Um, I, I suspect that's how that charge uh, came about. And to that end, um, he's not just some 33-year-old attorney at a white shoe firm. Um, he no. married into, into an interesting family, and he made the mistake that you've been saying for a long time. You can't lie to the feds, especially when you're talking about the Mueller team. They usually ask questions they already know the answers to. And to this end, reportedly, they had audio tapes um, of uh, Mr. Vanderswan's conversations, and they asked him who he talked to, and he lied to the feds, and now he's in a whole lot of trouble. And he could prove to be a very important material witness. Yes, and, and he, he does uh, appear to be cooperating. I just walked, watched him walk into the courthouse with two very fine lawyers who I know very well, Bill, Sh Bill Schwartz and Laura Berger, and he is pleading to an information, which is a signal that he, too, is cooperating. Now, that's very interesting, Richard, because he has that very strong connection to a very powerful Russian oligarch who sits at the right hand of Vladimir Putin, and you wonder what kind of information he has going that direction. And he certainly has uh, information that will uh, buttress whatever information it is that Mr. Gates is providing. So he'll be an oath helper to Mr. Gates, and he too may uh, give Mr. Mueller some terrific leads inside of Russia and how to find the connections between Russia and Trump. It's going to be very interesting to watch it play out. And finally, um, on the same day, Roland, as we see Donnie Jr. Um, going to <coughs> India and using, in effect, the imprimatur of the White House to try and secure business, while that may not be criminal uh, to many, I'll count myself among it, it's more than unseemly. It could be more than unseemly when we're talking about Jared Kushner and specifically what Mueller's looking into with his interests, especially during the transition period, with once again the Russians. Talk about uh, what the Mueller team might be looking into with the Trump son-in-law. Well, I, again, I, I am sure that the sort of holy grail that they're hoping to come up with is a sort of quid pro quo where the Russians would agree to bail Mr. Kushner and his companies out of some of the bad investments they've made. It, there's a particular building, 666 Fifth Avenue here in New York, that has often been mentioned as a problem for Mr. Kushner. Uh, I think Mr. Mueller is trying to find out if uh, the Russians' financial help to Mr. Kushner was conditioned on Mr. Kushner's help getting rid of the Magnitsky Act uh, sanctions. That, that was, that's always been the Russians' ultimate goal and uh, they know that in the world of Donald Trump and Jared Kushner, money talks. And so their investments in Kushner and Trump and uh, their buildings are likely to be tested to see uh, if they can be argued to be quid pro quos for uh, removal of the Magnitsky Act sanctions. Never dull, Roland. I appreciate the time, though, as always. Thank you. Yeah, and Richard, if something happens tomorrow, I'll be back. Happy to be here. <laughs> you got it. Thank you, my friend. Okay, everybody, when we come back here, uh, speaking of the law and high-profile cases, the latest on the Prococo corruption trial, more witnesses taking the stand in lower Manhattan and the judge taking a stand on whether some key evidence can be introduced. I'm talking about Vidi. We've got a report from the courthouse straight ahead. <laughs> 